and Pasi told to eat all the food that um, normal normal Pakeha eat, which isn't kind of it's not our steroid. Our steroid is the taro. <laughs> I'm still with the Sotaro and um, it worked for us. I chose netball for really stupid re reason. <laughs> um, the school netball team, I think as I got into high school, uh, had a brand new uniform. So I thought, wow, that's really fancy. It even had a sponsor's name on the back of it. So I thought, I'm going to play netball because they've got flash gears. We were, we were sponsored by Table Talk Chicken, but it didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. I worked there in the school holidays, so um, it was neat that I was able to make that connection. I don't think I really understood what I was getting myself into, and it was, it was really uh, just go with the flow for me. And, um, probably two years in the sort of ferns, it would still go with the flow until um, they, they dropped me going into that first World Cup where um, I, don't, I don't think the New Zealand team did very well, but I had the opportunity to play Irene Van Dyke, I can remember, and I really loved playing against her. And I remember someone waking me up early hours, I think it was a semi-final or quarter-final ferns against South Africa. And they said to me, you should have been there to play in that game. And I turned on the tally and we had missed out of the semis. It was probably that phone call that sort of got me to get my A into G. Um, and also just that break, sort of reflecting on, okay, do I want to take this and do some work? <laughs> um, and, and start training properly. It was a good break. It was a good year to just kind of be lost and, um, and find direction mm. again. You know, there were the real highs and then um, realising that if I don't make this playing seven, um, you know, I'm just going to have to keep working at it. And I think the real drive was um, probably my family because they were so down, you know, they were the, probably the most honest critics that I had in my game. So not often, often you wouldn't see them at any of my games. Um, I'd only get the report after the game. <laughs> Which would be if I wasn't on, they'd be going, oh, what are you doing there? <laughs> um, so they were a real sort of drive to stay in there. And, and I guess my faith too, you know, when I found that I had to um, really get in there, if I don't use it, I'm gonna lose it. Um, and that's kind of what drove me right through my career, is make the most of it um, while I've got the opportunity. And I knew it was a short time in my life, so, you know, pick it up, do what I can with it. Um, and it's probably given me back so much more than, than what I actually put in. Yeah. Um, and, and having this job too with, you know, working around our communities has always been a real drive too. Yeah. Mm. Being caught on in the semi-final, playing against Jamaica, playing through that I think it was that second half when, I, when Yvonne decided to put me on, I realised that um, I better grab some balls. <laughs> and the only thing I was looking for really was to put my best performance out there regardless of whether we won or not. And I was very lucky that um, that ball was coming down very slowly, quite high, and I was able to get under it and um, get us ahead one goal. So I think there were two more senior passes after that and we managed to win the game. But yeah, I'd always, I'd always remember too, you know, you can be on such a high. And I remember uh, Waitamanu coming down the court, just talking to Vanessa Nini at the time. And um, I went around thinking she's going to go, great, great intercept. But she said to me, she said something like, um, thank you for waking up and seeing that, <laughs> seeing that pass. Like, Okay, well that just got me back down to earth. <laughs> it's dear to my heart really because it's mostly our communities in the Māori and Pacifica uh, space who uh, often show up in the stats, um, you know, in the, that long tail of underachievement. Whilst that's still in the red, you know, we, we still have a job to do here. I always, when I'm speaking to the kids, I always see myself in them. 
Now I'm, I'm standing there going, oh, that poor girl, that really tall giant that's sitting there <laughs> in front of all those girls just reminds me of me. Um, and, and just trying to be in their shoes, what they might be thinking, what their home might be like, and working alongside government, uh, working alongside our schools, our education system, to um, somehow have a wraparound service to support all these kids. Yeah. So we're just a small part of it, Duffy Box, um, but always looking for ways to um, connect and collaborate with other community groups to make sure that you know we are fair around this child or this home or the community. Yeah. Um, so that's that's sort of the big picture of the program and where it sits, and that's what always gets me excited when I'm at these meetings and going. We can do something about that part of, the, of this home, yeah. yeah.